Today we're going to do three suttas. It's a set of three, a triad, called the Gilana Sutta. Gilana Sutta 1, Gilana Sutta 2, Gilana Sutta 3, and this is found in SD 43, Sutta Discovery Volume 43, chapters 11, 12, and 13. The word Gilana means the sick. So this is a sutta about the sick. Uh, the three suttas. The first one, Atama Gilana Sutta, is about uh, Mahakasapa who fell sick. Okay. And then the second one, Gilana Sutta 2, Lutia Gilana Sutta, is about Mahamogalana who fell sick. And both of these are very great arahats. And the third one, Gilana Sutta 2, uh, Sutta Gilana Sutta 3, rather, Patiya Gilana Sutta, is uh, about the Buddha himself who fell sick. So these are it's a set of three, and this is recorded in S 64, so it's on Utah, chapter, uh, chapter 46, rather, 46. Uh, Gilana Sutta 1 is S46.14. Then Gilana Sutta 2 is S46.15. And Gilana Sutta 3 is S46.15. Or you can also call these three suttas respectively as the Maha Kasapa Gilana Sutta, that is the first one. The Mahamukalana Gilana Sutta, that is number two, and the Bhagava Gilana Sutta, that is number three. All these three suttas, they effectively have the same text, very similar text, uh, just like change to reflect the person or the Arahat who is sick. Uh, what is interesting about these suttas is that they this is a very short sutta. They deal with what are called the seven awakening factors. The seven awakening factors are, are basically what happens when you meditate, especially when the, uh, an arahat or a saint meditates. Of course, for people like us who are still unawakened, the, the seven awakening factors are still very helpful because they give us a very helpful idea on how to meditate. Of course, the simplest tip here is that if you really want to meditate successfully, you have to be happy, have a kind of beginning on a happy note. Uh, even if you're not happy, you can still meditate. You should be meditating. You notice in our meditation, we occasionally, whenever we can, we make a habit of smiling in our meditation, smiling in your heart. The, the idea is, when you are smiling in your meditation, it's a very big event. I mean, when you are smiling, you can't be thinking negative thoughts. Or if you are thinking negative thoughts and you smile in your meditation, those negative thoughts quickly go away. And uh, it's much easier to meditate when you're happy. Let's just have a quick look at the uh, seven awakening factors. The first one is mindfulness. Mindfulness, sati. Uh, Sambojanga. Okay. When, when it is in the set, the word is Sambojanga. Uh, if it's just a name, it's called Bojanga. Bojanga comes from the word Bodhi plus Anga. So in Sanskrit, you have the word Bodhyanga. You, you see the formation clearer in Sanskrit. Uh, in Pali, they try to like make it uh, sound more smooth. It's a Bojanga. Okay. So Bodhi, Anga literally translated as awakening factor or factor of awakening. In other words, what are the things that help you to awaken? Or at least put you on the path to awakening. So the first is mindfulness. Mindfulness is uh, very simply put, right attention, attending rightly. Here, right attending means what? Directing your mind. Rightly means, for example, to the breath or to loving kindness, whatever the object of meditation you are holding. Then you keep on doing that. 
Now the next one, number two, is called Drama Investigation. Drama Vichaya. You can see all these terms on page 161 on the right hand side. Those underlying words and the Pali is on the right side. So Dharma investigation. Here Dharma we can translate as mental states. So whatever arises in your mind, just observe them. Here investigate means having a keen eye. What's going on? Noticing them. Okay? Be curious about them. But not following them. Let's say a thought arises. You don't follow the thought, you don't comment on the thought, but you observe these thoughts. The word investigation here is uh, Dhamma Vichaya, right? Sambo Chakka. In other words, you ask yourself, what is this thought? What's going on here? Just observe it, observe it. Or, if you like, you can look at this uh, event in your mind. What is, what really uh, is happening here? It's all impermanent. Right? So this. In simple terms, that's what we do, Dharma investigation. Then you keep on doing this. This is effort, virya, sampojanka. That's the third awakening factor. In other words, effort keeps you focused, keeps you on the path. So you keep on doing it. And when you keep on doing it, you feel a sense of joy. Uh, and or it's called a joyful interest or zest, piti sampojanga. It's like you enjoy doing something. When you enjoy doing something, it becomes effortless. Notice when you enjoy doing something, you find time seems to fly. On the other hand, if you enjoy doing something, although time seems to fly, but you find you still have time. You still have time. To, to do more wholesome things. It's just like when I give these talks on the suttas, you know. When I'm talking, I feel as if, wow, I'm taking quite a long time. Am I taking the time of other people, of the listeners, and so on. But then when I finish it, I say, oh, there's still some time, actually. So you have this wonderful sense of this time is on your side, so to speak. So because it, you are joyfully interested in what you are doing. So that is zest or piety. And if you go on just letting this zest arise and pass away, arise and pass away, then it begins to settle. This joy becomes more peaceful. And that's called tranquility. Tranquility, pasadi. Pasadi sambojanga. Here pasadi means body and mind become settled, becomes peaceful. Your breath becomes more peaceful. The body is your breath in this case. Everything becomes peaceful. Body and mind becomes more peaceful. Tranquility. And when body and mind becomes peaceful, there is concentration or samadhi. Some scholars suggest that we translate samadhi as stillness, which is also a good translation. So you can say this is the stillness factor. Eh? Um, the uh, awakening factor that is stillness or samadhi or mental concentration if you like. Here stillness means the mind is very calm, very peaceful and then uh, that's called uh, samadhi and then the last one, number seven is equanimity, peka, upeka sambojanga. That's when the mind is so calm and peaceful you just you don't need to do anything. It's so peaceful. You don't feel your body anymore. There's just this wonderful mind, very peaceful. Thinking as we know it stops. Knowing as we understand it also stops. We feel. I mean, just to use uh, something helpful for us to understand outside of meditation, we feel what is going on. We feel the peace. We don't talk about it, we don't think about it. Because thinking, there is the mediation of thought, of concepts. Whereas feeling, you just feel it. You're happy, there's nothing to talk about. We know that it's not a concept. You cannot talk about it, there's nothing to talk about. We don't have much to debate here. Just imagine a time when you were really happy for any good reason, you're really happy. When someone asks you, can you? 
tell me how you feel? And probably the best answer you'll give is, I don't know. No? You just, uh, we say lost for words. Uh, that's exactly what it is. You can't find the words to describe it because it's not a concept. Joy is not a concept, it's a feeling. You feel happy. Right? But you can, if you talk a lot about it, you're not really happy. So this is the last stage. Okay? Well, this last stage is, uh, it can go as far as jhana, even beyond. But for unawakened people, you feel calm and peaceful and happy. And that's good enough. So these are the seven awakening factors. So here, uh, in, in these three stories, you have three great arahats, Mahakasapa, Mahamokalana, and the Buddha, who are down with a fever. Nothing serious, really, but fever. But it, as you know, in the Buddha's time, the living in the forest, if you do have a fever and you're a monk, it's quite can be quite uh, difficult. There will be no one to take care of you except other monks. But the monks are very good taking care of themselves. And, and this is one kind of sickness. Apparently, you can use a kind of meditation, a kind of reflection, rather, uh, to heal yourself. So here is where uh, the seems to be a hint that the mind is able to heal the body. Now we have to be careful here, we're not talking about some kind of panacea, some miraculous cure for all kinds of diseases. We find the Buddha doesn't prescribe this for the century, or his backache. You know? I mean, if you have a backache, you don't need to do all this uh, deep reflection, just lie down and sleep, as you call it that, as that, you know. But this is one occasion when the Buddha says you, you can do this, you can reflect on that seven awakening factors. Now let's look at, this, at the first sutta. And from there we have a good idea how the other two uh, uh, are constructed. Okay, So the first one is the discourse on the on, on Mahakasapa. Right? Mm, sorry, just, but there's something else before I go on to that. Let, let me just uh, talk about how the, all these three stories, they came to be summarized into one paritta. So this, this is where we see over time um, what is a meditative tradition became a popular tradition. In other words, the lay people who don't have time or inclination to meditate, they are quite happy to listen to the chanting. So in other words, they begin to chant these uh, words reflecting on these three great arahats when they fell sick. Uh, in a way, the purpose of this chant is to remind them, number one, to remind them of this wonderful event where these three great arahats were sick and then they reflected on the seven factors of awakening and they were healed. Uh, you might say rather simply, this is a kind of apotropic Buddhism or magical Buddhism where, where people feel just by listening, they feel happy and, and then uh, they are healed. It may or may not work, uh, but many of these people, they, you know, they're quite happy doing this. Well, this is something we don't encourage, but this is what is very popular with people who are very busy, people who are not inclined to study suttas and so on. So this is popular Buddhism. On the other hand, this is a kind of like a, a permanent signboard where it's always there with the people, with the folks out there. And there'll be those who are intelligent, who are investigative. They, they hear all this chants and they say, do you know what this means? Or can you tell me what this is all about? And, and then you find maybe there's a, a learned teacher there, or a learned monk or nun who could explain all these things. So this is one way how Buddhism, early Buddhism, is kind of kept going on various levels. So this uh, paritta, paritta actually, has two meanings. One, one meaning is small, small. In other words, this are it's a downscale version of the chants or downscale version of the sutras, which are very long, and they are normally in verses and they, they are chanted like mantras. In fact, they have the effect of mantras in a sense. And uh, parita also means protection. It means all around, you're protected all around. So this is a kind of protective. Uh, verse or protective rune if you like. So this is called popularly called the Bojanga Parita. So this gives us a 
interest, uh, narrative summary as well as the basic teachings of the three suttas combined. So I will begin by reading that to you and then see what you make of it. This, the Parita is on page 160. I will, read, I will recite verse by verse and then just read the translation to you. Bhujango sati sankhato dhamma nang vichayo tatha viriyam piti pasati bhujanga cha tatha pare. The awakening factors comprising mindfulness, then dhamma investigation, effort, zest, and tranquility, and another awakening factor that is, so this verse is kind of half complete, and then you go to the next verse. Samadhu Pekabo Janga Satte Te Sabadasina Munina Samadakata Bhavita Bahulikata. The awakening factors that are samadhi and equanimity, these seven, by the all seeing one, the sage have been well pointed out, when cultivated, made much of. Again, the, the verse is not finished here. Continue the next one. Samvat tanti abhinyaya nibbanaya cha bhotiya etena satcha vajjena sottite o sottime hotu sabbada. Bring about direct knowledge, awakening in nirvana. By the power of this truth, may you, may you is sottite, or may I, sottime, be well always. Now this last two lines here, etena satcha vajjena, by the power of this truth. May I be, may you be well, may I be well. This is called Sachikiriya, it's a very ancient Indian tradition if you like. It's called an act of truth, right? You say by the power of this truth, may you be well, by the power of this truth, may you be happy, may I be well, may I be safe. So it's a kind of a, a very powerful way of loving kindness if you like. You know? it's, it's just like you meet someone and tell your friend, hey, you look great. Eh? Uh, may you be well, I like you, and so on. So if, when you say that, you, you feel, you, you see people brighten up, they, they feel great, they say, wow, this guy likes me. So that's a kind of uh, empowerment of another person, if you like. So that's the spirit in which we recite this kind of verses. Then comes the summaries of the stories of the three suttas. Ekasmin samaye nato mokala nancha kasapangilani dukite diswa bojange sapta desai. Once the Lord or the refuge, seeing that Mokalana and Kasapa too were sick and in pain, taught the seven awakening factors. Techa abinanditwa roga mochin sutankane etena sacha vajena sotite or sotime hotu sapta. And they, rejoicing at once, are freed from their illness. By the power of this truth, may you or may I be well always. So obviously, this chant is to be done to someone who is sick. You recite this before someone who is sick. Then verse 6. Ekada. Is that correct? Six. Yes. Okay. Ekada dhamma raja pi ge la nye na pi pi lito chunda te rena tanye wa bana pe tuana sadarang. Once the king of truth himself, that's the Buddha, was afflicted with illness, the elder chunda, with deep regard, recited this teaching. Samo di tuacha abada tamhi uta sitana so e tena satcha wajena so tite so time hotu sakada. The Buddha, rejoicing, recovers from that illness at once. By, this, by the power of this truth, may you or may I be well, always. Then the last verse, Pahina te cha abada tinnanam tinnanam pi mahe sinang magahata kile sava patanu pati dhammatam these illnesses were dispelled from these three great seers, that's the arhats, just as the famines destroyed by the path attain the nature of non-arising. By the power of this truth, may you or may I be well, always. Right? So these are the popular paritasa. Protective chance. Okay, we summarize the three suttas 
we're going to do a cap. Alright, now the first sutta. Remember all the three suttas, their structure are identical. The words just kind of vary a little bit in terms of narrative. Page 161. The first discourse on the ill, as 46.14. One time the Blessed One was staying in the squirrel's feeding ground in the bamboo grove near Rajga. Now at that time the Venerable Mahakasapa was residing in the Pipadi cave. He was sick, in pain, gravely ill. Okay, Mahakasapa, as you know, uh, is one of the leading monks. He is foremost amongst the monks who are very austere. He wears rough robes and so on. He has a kind of a you might say the typical forest man is very strict. There is kind of a, like a father figure, if you like. And uh, he is mostly by himself in the forest. He lives alone. He's, he's not the one who has to mix around with people so and be meditating. In fact, uh, he, uh, he's probably quite an elderly monk and, and yet uh, kind of strong enough. So he survived the Buddha. And, and, uh, he went on to convene the first council, which kind of put all the suttas together. So he, he plays a very important role in the history of Buddhism. So this is Mahakasapa. So he, he was meditating in the in this Pipali cave. I think this Pipali is what we call Chile in our dialect, you know, in our language. And his name also was Pipali when he was a layman. So this is a, a cave. He's staying in and meditating, and he's kind of lying down and resting. Then in the evening, having emerged from his solitary retreat, the Blessed One went up to the Venerable Mahakasapa and sat down at the seat that had been laid out. So here you see the Buddha is someone who also visits the monks, who, who sees how the other monks are. So he's not like someone who's high and aloof, always sitting on a lotus throne and kind of never touches the earth and so on. He is always ready to visit people who are sick. He is always going out there to help people. Thus seated the Blessed One said this to the Venerable Mahakasapa. How are you, Kasapa? I hope you are bearing up and getting better. I hope that your painful feelings are subsiding, that their subsiding is evident, not their rising. So basically saying, how are you feeling? And here, Mahakasapa says, I cannot bury Pante, I'm not getting better. My painful feelings are not subsiding, but rising. The rising is evident, not the subsiding. Now, there's a bit of a problem here. Some of you more intelligent students might notice, like you say, oh, these are arahats, we're talking about Mahakasapa, you know. Uh, as an arahat, he wouldn't be troubled by pain, would he? Okay, the first thing we should understand is this, these are narratives which are handed down in a literary form, in oral tradition. So what the, the monks, the reciters have done, they are telling us in a formal language, okay, so and so is sick, so this is what he would say if he's sick. It's, it's not really not, no big deal here, I mean, our heart is, I mean, he, he, his body is in pain, so he says, oh, this, this pain is really bad. This is basically what he's saying. Um, and for whose benefit is he saying this? For our benefit. I mean, what uh, is meant here is something like, look, even arahats fall sick. Why? Because they have a physical body. So if arahats fall sick, what about us? We too will fall sick. So we reflect in that way. I'm working on the reflection on death now. I'm translating chapter 8 of the Visibimaka where there is this list of reflections on death. So one of them is to reflect on the Pachika Buddha and on, on the Buddha himself, that despite all their great wisdom and awakening, they too have to pass away. So if they have to pass away, what about us? We too have to pass away. So we reflect in that way. It's a kind of a reality check, in other words. So we don't really need to speculate how to the Arahats feel, are they really troubled by it? I mean, he may say all these things, the Arahat may say all these things, but he's not troubled by the pain the way we are. 
So uh, basically, Marcus by saying, I'm feeling really down, really terrible. Then uh, the Buddha replies, the Buddha says, These seven awakening factors, Kasapa, have been well pointed out by me. When cultivated, grown, they bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. What are the seven? The awakening factor that is, that is mindfulness, sati sambo changa, has been well pointed out by me. When cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. So what the Buddha has done, he has, he has started helping uh, Mahakasapa go into some kind of reflective listening, at peace with himself. Meaning, he is coming out, bringing his level of consciousness from the body to the mind. The awakening factor that is Dharma investigation, Dharma Vichaya Sambo Janga, has been well pointed out by me. When cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. Now here when you see the italicized fonts, it means these are all repeated passages. Because this is a convention I've used to show for those who are reading that this is a repetition. So more or less, you know, okay, I know this passage is like the one in the, in the first uh, paragraph. The awakening factor that is effort, Virya Sambojanga, when it comes to the Pali words, you, you, you either read them or you can omit them, it's up to you. The awakening factor that is effort has been well pointed out by me when cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. The awakening factor that is zest, P.T. Sambojanga, has been well pointed out by me when cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. The awakening factor that is tranquility, Pasati Sampojanga, has been well pointed out by me when cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. The awakening factor that is mental concentration or stillness, mental stillness, Samadhi Sampojanga, has been well pointed out by me when cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. Seven, the awakening factor that is equanimity, upeka sambojanga, has been well pointed out by me when cultivated, grown, bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. These kasapa are the seven awakening factors that have been well pointed out by me when cultivated, grown, they bring about direct knowledge, self-awakening, nirvana. Of course the Buddha would have spoken even more slowly, mindfully, beautiful, sonorous voice. Then Mahakasapa replies, Indeed, blessed one, they are awakening factors. Indeed, well gone, or sugata, they are awakening factors. This is called an exaltation. <clears throat> the blessed one said this, then the, the Venerable Mahakasapa joyfully approved of the Blessed One's word and the Venerable Mahakasapa recovered from his illness. In this way was the Venerable Mahakasapa's illness abandoned. So it's a bit of a healing story here if you like. Of course the interesting point here, how does this happen if, if you like. Number one, you have to understand, it is not a serious sickness. Okay, we're not talking about cancer or some mental problem. We're talking about a fever, kind of a, a kind of not too bad kind of sickness. So this is where by coming the mind, by being happy, by reflecting on the awakening factors, you recover. So that's the lesson. So this is where sometimes we do get a little sick, down with a cold or flu perhaps. So the idea is to make sure you are happy and positive, keep yourself bright, that you heal faster, that's the meaning. Of course you can recite the, these uh, seven awakening factor list, or even one of, you can choose one of these three suttas, or you can choose the summary 
by way of the parita. It works best when you know the meaning of what you recite. So it's good to look at the Pali and the, and the translation beside it. So when you hear the Pali words, and the, the meaning in English comes to mind. So that way you have the benefit of both worlds, the original text as well as the, the translation. And, and when you do that, your mind is focused on just that wonderful sound, on just the, the wonderful meaning of the teaching. And that's how you heal yourself. Right? So this way you have something psychosomatic if you like. Sometimes the, the body affects the mind, the mind affects the body. So this is where if you heal the mind, the body is healed too. And today you find a lot of scientists who tell you there are sicknesses which are mind-made. If that's the case, then if you heal the mind, you heal the body too. So this is the first story. Now the second story is very similar, so we, we just kind of look at it compared to the first sutta. So the second is called Gilana Sutta 2, Dutiya Gilana Sutta or Mughalana Gilana Sutta. Here the starting is slightly different. It's, it's S46115. It starts off this way. At one time the blessed, the blessed one was staying in the squirrel's feeding ground in the bamboo grove near Rajgaha. So in the first case, Ma Kasaba was living in the Pipali cave. Okay? So this time it's bamboo grove. At that time, the Venerable Mahamogalana was residing in Mount Vulture's Peak. So Mogalana was elsewhere. Okay? It was on Mount Vulture's Peak. Probably in one of those, so there's a small little cave is sitting there, around a tree maybe. And he was sick, in pain, gravely ill. Then in the evening, having emerged from his solitary retreat, the Blessed One went up to the Venerable Maha Mokalana and sat down on the prepared seat that has been on the prepared seat. No? So in other words, he visits Maha Mokalana this time. So here again you see the same pattern in the evening after uh, the Buddha's old meditation. This would be like just after sunset if you like. Okay? And again here the, the Buddha asks Maha Mokalana, how are you? And Mokalana says, no. He says, oh, wow, this pain is really bad. And the Buddha teaches Mughalana the same thing. So, well, these are the seven awakening factors, one by one. It's not intellectual exercise, remember. The repetitions here are very important. I mean, you can't go to a sick person and say, okay, here it is, you know, you have the seven factors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't work that way. That's intellectual exercise. The idea here is you go through them one by one. So, okay, the first one, this is what the Buddha taught. And this is what happens when you practice this. So in so doing, you calm yourself down. So here you're using words to calm yourself down, in other words. So, and at the end of it, so, uh, Mahamukhalana rejoices. Notice that's the word, he rejoices in the teaching. It is this rejoicing that is healing. So the lesson here is when we visit the sick, we want them to be happy. So we won't be telling them unhappy things. We should be telling them happy things. So this is another uh, tip when we visit the sick to kind of help them recover more quickly. Then the third uh, Sutta, Gilana Sutta 3, this is Tatiya Gilana Sutta or the Bhagavad Gilana Sutta, and the Buddha himself was sick. Okay, this one there is a slight difference because we're talking about the Buddha who is sick. So let's find out what's the difference here. As for the 6.16. At one time, the Blessed One was staying in the squirrel's feeding ground in the bamboo grove near Rajgaha. Now at that time, the Blessed One was sick, in pain, gravely ill. Then the Venerable Mahachunda went up to the Blessed One, saluted him and sat down at one side. Okay, Mahachunda is one of the great disciples here, one of the elders. Thus at one side, the Blessed One said this to the Venerable Mahachunda. So here is the Buddha who initiates the conversation. He tells Mahachunda, he instructs Mahachunda, recite the seven awakening factors, Chunda. Okay, notice here, the Buddha himself tells the man to recite for him. Then the Buddha sits back and listens. So here is Mahachunda, the one who is reciting the same seven awakening factors. And the Buddha listens 
and uh, then the Buddha says 5.3 indeed Chunda they are the awakening factors indeed Chunda they are the awakening factors now there's something wonderful happening here you see the Buddha himself saying these are really wonderful teachings so this is where you see another example where the Buddha places the Dharma above himself he doesn't say, don't worry, I don't fall sick. You know, I mean, it's, it's not a, a kind of the so-called cosmic Buddha who doesn't fall sick, who pretends to be sick and so on. I mean, these are later Buddhist fiction, which uh, here in, in the early Sutta you see the Buddha uh, as he is. You might say he was a human being, but here he is Buddha, and Buddha is a term by itself, a kind of rara avis, or uh, as, as we say, Subspecies eternitatis, in other words, the Buddha is his own being, so to speak, and uh, he, he has a body, so he does feel sick, but because the body feels sick, he's able to use his mind, feel happy, and overcome the sickness in that sense. So his mind is not trouble. The body, being what it is, will have to face the vagaries around uh, in, in this world, and he he deals with all those pains and so on. And if he does that, we too can do it in the same way. We will follow the instructions carefully. So the teacher approves of what Juna has taught and he recovers then that. So there you are. These are the three suttas which, which tell us uh, to reflect on the seven awakening factors. They are very important teaching, showing us how to meditate and also how to stay healthy, especially mentally healthy. And they're very simple teachings, and yet in the seven awakening factors, you find there are very profound teachings, which we can reflect whenever we like, step by step, or any one of them, and then from there, go on to feel happy, and uh, maybe work ourselves towards awakening in this life itself. Okay, so we end our study here today. Let us close with a short reflection. Now today we have reflected on three suttas, on the Gilana Sutta 1, 2 and 3, showing us how two great arhats, Mahakasapa and Mahamogalana, fell sick and how the Buddha kind of taught them, reminded them of the seven awakening factors. And reflecting on these seven awakening factors, they were healed. And the Buddha himself, when he was sick, he too reflected on the seven awakening factors. All these three suttas remind us that we can keep our minds healthy and bright. In that way, we are less likely to fall sick, or when we do fall sick, we will recover quickly. And more important than that, these teachings remind us how to prepare ourselves for meditation how to rise above our body, how to go beyond the limitations of the body, to free ourselves on a mental level, to be at peace, and to free ourselves from suffering. These are very wonderful reflections, but part of the good karma of this reflection, may we be well and happy here and now. And in this moment of peace too, let us Recall to mind all the good deeds we have been doing, our faith in the three jewels, our practice of the precepts of, of charity, and our desire to know the truth and be awakened. By all this good, all this good karma, may we aspire towards awakening in this life itself, by attaining at least stream winning. In this moment of peace too, let us send out our loving kindness to all the beings here, to everyone here, that they may be well and happy. And may those who are seeking the Dharma find it and realize the truth in this life itself. And may those who are lost or confused to see the true Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha directly. And also may our loved ones, our friends, our relatives be well and happy. And those whom the Dharma have not touched to see the Dharma for themselves and be happy. May all beings be well and happy. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.